G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to, screw it, let's call it Phantom Friday. This is the F4EJ Kai, and the F4EJ Kai is one of two Phantoms we're going to be looking at today. Personally, I've been greatly enjoying the Phantoms, and I just kind of wanted to showcase a couple of good matches that I had in them, and demonstrate the capabilities of both of these planes. A lot of people are hailing the MiG-23 MLD as the king of top tier, and I kind of agree, but I also kind of disagree. I think it's a very fair fight. Um, I do, by the way, want to do a top tier roundup where I do a full breakdown of the missiles, of the, the stats of all the planes, perhaps even the radars. I just need a bit more information on that. If, if someone could provide me with some uh, data mine sources regarding the radars, that would be excellent, um, as well as the flare sensitivity of missiles. I just can't find them anywhere. I've looked so hard and I just cannot find them. So um, if anyone could help me with that, I would greatly appreciate you. And of course, I would credit you in the video for it. So. Uh, that would be amazing if someone could do that. But for now, well, I'm just going to kind of casually show you the F4 EJ Kai and its capabilities. So the EJ Kai, as I understand it, is a slightly heavier F4E. I believe it to be the heaviest F4E in game. Um, but it does come with a couple of key features that you aren't going to see on the other F4Es. And that is a pulse Doppler radar and AIM 7E2 dogfights. These are basically more likely to turn and burn than your average AIM 7Es. Uh, these are pretty much excellent missiles. And as I can tell uh, by looking at the missile stat cards, they are practically identical to the uh, Sky Flashes. And of course, to the RB-74, the RB-71s, uh, the radar missiles that Sweden has at the moment on the Jagdvig. Um, now, the F-4 EJ Kai is a little bit special because it's got the combination of AIM-9Ps, Pulse Doppler radar, and an internal Vulcan cannon, which is kind of unseen on all of the other Phantoms. It's kind of unique to the Japanese tech tree, which is funny because the Americans were the pioneers of the Phantom. But, you know, it's it's all right, because this was a specially designed uh, Phantom, as I understand, or at least modified by the uh, Japanese Self-Defense Force to suit their needs uh, as a modernization program. At least that's the way I understand it. If I'm wrong, of course, comment in the uh, in the comments below uh, and let me know how wrong I am because I would, I would actually like to know if I'm wrong. So what am I actually doing here? What am I doing on the map? I'm skirting the outside. So you can see that the opponents are about 20 kilometers away. There's an F4E that probably needs some help, but there are opponents that are sitting on the periphery that are gonna come in and they are basically gonna come in behind your, uh, your team. And so I need to eliminate them and I send out a, uh, or I prepare out a 9P, but it's just gonna be too little too late. It's, it's not really, or is it enough? It looks like it's gonna strike. And of course it does because the A9Ps are fantastic. I actually over or underestimate the uh, effect of the 9Ps. They are very, very solid missiles. And now the SU-22 here, who is farming AI very irresponsibly, is going to get a taste of the 9Ps as well, and it dies like, uh, I don't really know, just, just dies. So, MiG-21 here, I don't know if it's an MF or a BIS, because the uh, Germans now have the MiG-21 BIS in the form of the SAU variant. Uh, and so I'm just going to be a little bit cautious because they could have the semi-active radar homing R3Rs. And so I need to be careful, especially when I'm at a little bit of a higher altitude. And of course, at a higher altitude relative to the uh, MiG-21. Unfortunately, I don't think that missile is going to hit. And of course, sending out another ambitious missile towards that MLD is not going to prove fruitful either. I'm too close to this FGR2, so I'm going to go for a little bit of a brute. Of course, landing a critical hit, which is lovely. And the MiG-27 in the distance is probably going to be my next target, provided that that is the only one that pops up. And it looks like it is. Although I do see another target, and there is something traveling behind me, which is the MiG-21. There is an opponent here at four kilometers. I see that as a great target of opportunity. A little bit of flaring tends to... Uh, tends to work okay, but the MiG-23 MLD's uh, ability to outturn the missile is what gets me in the end here. So now that the MiG-23 has bled a fair amount of speed, I'm able to sort of put some distance between me and uh, throw that 9P out. I almost take some shots from the enemy there, and uh, the FGR-2 is looking pretty damn slow. So I've noticed that he's not turning towards me. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to take out that enemy and uh, try and get some more speed. The F4EJ Kai really benefits itself from going in and out of clusterfucks like this, especially enemies that are either in a head-on situation where you use the AIM-7s or in a uh, rear-ending or rear-aspect dogfight where you use the uh, 9Ps, especially at those close ranges. Now, these two enemies here are coming in very close. They both are fixated on me, except for that MiG-27 there, who's now petered off down below. 
the MiG-27 who's up at altitude is probably going to be the more interesting target or the more vital target, uh, provided that he ends up coming towards me. Now, it looks like that second MiG-27 is starting to make a run home. And so whilst this MiG-27 here comes in, I'm going to prep and aim 7. I managed to get the lock on, and because he's so slow, I can actually get the hit. And because the F5C is, uh, you know, being very responsible and using flares, I'm able to save him in time, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, fast forwarding a little bit, I actually stay in the battlefield for a little bit, waste an aim 7 on this guy again, who's got some fresh uh, missiles and fresh fuel. I'm low on fuel, which is very irresponsible. I should have just gone back to base instead of deciding to be a little bit of a sweat, I suppose. But I'm going to put this plane through its paces against the MiG-27M, and uh, it, it can kind of kind of tussle. The MiG-27M is the lightest of the MiG-23 and MiG-27 family. It doesn't have a radar in the nose, and it's got... Uh, I believe it's got pretty much a lighter airframe, and so you're going to have a hard time outturning it in the F4EJ Kai, being the fattest of the Phantoms. But of course, MiG-21 Waifu is coming in with the goods, and it looks like he's managed to maybe land a strike. Uh, either way, I, I need to get rid of this guy, because by throwing around my plane, I've wasted a lot of time, and uh, I would really, really like to have my sixth kill. But of course, if uh, MiG-21 Waifu here in the F5 manages to get the kill, I think that's a win in itself, because at the end of the day, he uh, set up the previous MiG-27. I would consider that a uh, fair deal. So I'm scaring this uh, MiG-27 here, but it looks like he's gone into a flat spin. I didn't realize at first, so I took a little shot, which is a little shit, but uh, I didn't land any hits, thankfully. And so that kill is rightfully the MiG-20, uh, the, the F5s. The MiG-20, is it MiG-28? That's the, the fake one that they used in Top Gun? I believe so. Either way, this is the type of stuff that you can get done in the F4 EJ Kai. You sort of run in, run out of these dogfights. And of course, these clustered dogfights are going to happen all the time at this tier. Now, moving on to the FG1. Now, I hated this plane, and I hate it at the moment as it is on the screen because it's all pixelated. But um, you know what? If Gaijin throws you a hand like that, you just deal with it. So... We are, we are in our pixelated FG1, and I used to hate the FG1. I used to hate the FGR2 as well, but uh, I started to learn the plane. I learned its quirks, and I found it to be quite pleasant, actually. It's a very good plane, but it does have its quirks. You do get more ammunition, but it's on, a, on an external gun pod. You get AIM-9Gs instead of AIM-9Js, which are... They're okay. I would consider them pretty good. And of course you get the Skyflash dogfights, which are just excellent. Now, that F8U did not stand a chance against the might of the Pulse Doppler radar. And uh, it's basically, who's next? Again, I'm doing what you would normally do in a Phantom and sit on the periphery before coming into the center of the map. Um, and that is what I would uh, probably consider to be the best, op uh, best case scenario, the best opportunity. Now, I am skirting around the battlefield here, sort of around the enemy's bases, right about at that line, and I'm going to come in and look for targets of opportunity. I'm looking for targets that are either flying in a straight line, or engaging enemies, or in other words, not paying attention. So these are the targets that are going to be most susceptible to things like the 9Gs. Uh, these, plan these, these missiles are a little bit more susceptible to flares. I would love to figure out the value of that. Again, let me know in the comments section below if you have a source on that. Um, particularly an in-game source, not a real-life source. So, uh, Pulse Doppler moment coming out again, and it looks like the MiG-23 was trying to do the same. It might be a MiG-23M, which is why the missile wasn't quite as uh, as potent, or it could have been a, uh, uh, a MiG an R-24, but it could have just uh, you know decided it was not quite ready to fly yet, and uh, that would have been the end of it. Now, my team is starting to fall apart, and that's not a good thing. That's a... Uh, very terrible thing for anyone in a Phantom, but particularly the FG-1, because this is, I believe, the heaviest of all of the Phantoms. It's like the chonk. It's uh, a little bit heavier than the FGR-2 because it's got beefier landing gear. Um, I believe it is based on the F-4M, which is based on the F-4-something. I'm not entirely sure. Let me know in the comments. I can never remember this, but it doesn't matter because all we need to know is that this thing is a fat heckin' chonker and should not be getting into dogfights with MiG-21s. I say that, and I get into a dogfight with a MiG-21. Not quite. What I'm doing here is I'm relying on the MiG-21's uh, like weakness of it bleeding a lot of speed in turns to get onto this, uh, get onto my six, and then using my flares to distract the R60s, and it's working. 
because this plane is extremely fast, especially at sea level, it's becoming a bit of an opportunity here to uh, try and avoid this guy. Now, I have noticed that the MiG-23s, F5 and MiG-23 there are looking very, very juicy. So I'm going to go after them. I managed to hit one in the face and the next MiG-23 is coming up next. There's an F5 behind me. And of course, these guys closing the gaps really quickly is quite dangerous. But there are so many enemies in this vicinity that I just need to do something. My team is pretty much dead. There is one guy left. It's an AJ-37 and he's back at base. So he's pretty much no use to me at this point in time. I need to find a way to mitigate the enemies here. And by using flares and by keeping my speed up, and of course I'm running out of fuel, uh, I need to make sure that I find a way to get back safely. And now the, the only option I really have is to head back towards my base because that's where the AJ-37 is. And I know if I can get the AJ-37 into the fight, we can at least have some semblance of a chance to do a little bit of damage. Now, it looks like the F5 peels off to go and kill ground targets. The MiG-21 is closing in pretty damn quick. They are actually faster than uh, the Phantoms at pretty much all altitudes. It's just a matter of uh, sort of retaining that energy because the MiG-21 loses that energy and turns very, very quickly. Now, the AJ-37 is coming straight back. And it looks like I can just gain away from these planes. But as soon as they start pulling out the missiles, it's pretty much game over. Because there's nothing that I can do to, uh, to gain back that speed once I've turned and burned. Now, the AJ-37 is an absolute wizard and kills one of the MiG-21s. And the other MiG-21 is uh, sort of turning around for the AJ-37. And this is my chance to strike. The, the MiG-21s really suck when it comes to that low speed continuous dogfighting because they just bleed so much speed. And if you are a second party in a fight, for example, in this case here where I've got a teammate, uh, I can boom and zoom and I can essentially just come in and out whenever I please because I know the AJ-37 is going to roughly keep up with the uh, MiG-21. And so I can pretty much energy fight the MiG-21 and you can see how much the MiG-21 is struggling to pitch up to me here. And it looks like he's going for a last minute, last ditch head on. Uh, it's not really going to work, especially if you're pitching up. What I recommend he should have done is pitch to down, picked up some speed and maybe tried to isolate us a little bit or try and get us to fight on the same plane, as in like flying next to each other, basically. But it looks like he's just too damn damaged. And I think I'm going to finish him off with a little bit of BM in the form of an M9G. The F5 is gone back to base. And so that is my cue to go back to base, get some more fuel, get some more ammunition and get some more... Uh, missiles and so that is pretty much kill number six going on for kill number seven and potentially kill number eight we've um, put up a blind hunt here and there's an f5 looking very juicy that's the one i believe from before uh, and i believe the other enemy is an su-22 or an su-17 one of those two so we have an enemy that has a lot of flares and then we have an enemy that has fairly deadly missiles we have an enemy here in the form of the F5 that can probably tussle with the AJ-37. And so I need to deal with him pretty rapidly in the form of pulse stopper missiles. Because I know that the F5 is maybe going to be too slow. Maybe not going to know how to notch. And it looks like he's just going straight to notching either by choice or by accident. He's flaring a little bit. And so this is where I really have to make a mark. I'm not really able to. And the SU-17 has just taken off. And so while these opponents are still slow... Um, we do have a great advantage. I need to be careful because if I end up in a situation where the AJ-37 is in a chase, uh, where I'm the, the bait and everyone else is chasing and the AJ-37 is being sort of uh, pulled away, then it's not really going to work. Now, the AJ-37 goes for one of those weird suicide head-ons with the SU-17 and ends up on the losing end. And that puts me in a pretty shit situation. Uh, the AJ-37, uh, what I reckon he would should have done is just, just taken it easy. I know he's probably watching, uh, Robinator, I would, I would recommend that you just take it easy. And I would recommend to everyone that you just take it easy because with War Thunder, if you rush into a situation, you are almost certainly going to die. And that's just, that's just the way it goes. You need to think about these things. Just be nice and careful, nice and sm smooth, nice and methodical. And uh, the F5C here has not been that because he's now on fire and he's burning and going to pay a repair cost. I don't really know why he decided to pitch up, but you know what? If there's a free kill, I'm going to take it. And so that is exactly what I do. So we have the SU-17 here. Kill number six is well and truly done. And it is time to finish this off with a sky flash because the SU-17 is probably just going to full commit for head on. 
I, for some reason, can't get a good lock. I'm going to go for it anyway. It looks like it tracks at the last second, but it's just a little bit too late. I just, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I, it's probably due to the SU-17's really low speed, uh, and it looks like the SU-17 may have been damaged by the AJ-37 in the process of uh, a suicide head-on. Now, I've noticed that he's starting to fly under me, and so I'm just going to prep a 9G, lead it a little bit, and the 9G is basically going to do the rest of the work because the uh, SU-17 has made himself so slow. You've got to keep up your speed, ladies and gents. If you don't keep up your speed, you can't have any kills. And so the FG-1 excels in a situation where you have slow opponents or opponents that are low on energy, and that's exactly what I've exploited here. Both these Phantoms, the F-4 EJ Kai and the FG-1, are just excellent. I'm having so much fun in these planes, and I would honestly hope that that continues to be the case. But anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to support the channel, there are plenty of links down in the description below and on screen as we speak. But uh, until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.